Do you have a passion? Do you ever fear about that passion? No. Are you ever scared of change? Yeah. Or a failure? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Nicholas Riker, and I have a fear of being static. <coughs> By static, I mean a stagnation of my passions and my hobbies and my work. I don't want to be the same person that I was five years ago or even one year ago. I want to continually change and improve. I do this by always trying new things, always taking new opportunities when they arise, and also by always making sure that I follow one golden rule. If I do something, then I'll make sure that I learn from it. When I was a young child, I loved to take apart my toys. I love to take my brand new light-up action figure or toy robot and break it into its component pieces. Inside it was a whole new world to explore. One laden with gears, lights, and copper wire. Doing this filled me with such a sense of curiosity that nothing else could. I love to think about why was this designed this way? Why did these two parts go together? Why did they click together in such an elegant way? Even though I truly didn't understand what was being engineered. That sense of curiosity is still with me today. I am a tinkerer with electronics. I build things out of the exact same components that I took apart as a child. When I first started high school, I didn't 100% know what I wanted to do in my life. I didn't 100% know what I wanted to be my career, to be my passion. I did, however, know that I wanted to work with computers. They seem like such amazing machines, such amazing works of art. You could make them do anything you wanted. However, to me, there was something daunting about them. They seemed like black boxes. They never were able to show me what was actually going on inside of them, what they were thinking at one moment. I could only tell what was going on through all the colorful menus and lights that came about from them. There was one way that I tried to work with computers, and that was programming. Programming is essentially a way of giving computer instructions in the most easily recognizable manner. Say, what if you wanted to, what if you were driving, and you wanted to make a left turn at an intersection? How would you do that? Well, you'd stop at a red light, put your turning signal on, hopefully before, and when it was clear, you'd establish in the middle of the intersection, turn your wheel, and turn left when it was safe. It's essentially the same thing for programming, except instead, you're checking if two numbers are equal, or you're checking the length of a string, a set of numbers and letters. It never made sense to me when I first started trying programming. Reading through all the online tutorials and all the code examples, as they were called, never made sense. So it drove me away from programming at first. That was until I started high school. Every year, my school hosts a club fair. That's an event where all the different clubs and teams and groups, some athletic, some artistic, all gather together in one room and try and attract new members. Now, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was the most popular person in school. I wasn't exactly athletic, nor was I artistic, which in my mind at first felt like a requirement. I remember one specific memory. When I was four, my grandmother took me to indoor soccer, le soccer lessons. I was so bored with it. I didn't want to kick around the ball. I wanted to look at how the metal curtain that divided the gym slid gracefully across the rails. One memory that I have 
is of her asking me, okay, Nicholas, do you want to go and play soccer now? To that, I just turned around, smiled, and said, no thanks. Now with that, you can assume how badly the club fair would have went for me, with most of the clubs being either artistic or athletic. I remember being apathetic to pretty much everything there. Hockey? No, I can't skate. Baseball? Can't swim about that well, that would be kind of dangerous. Drama? Can't sing, can't dance, can't act. Soccer? No. <laughs> it seemed like there was nothing there that was for me. Honestly, I just wanted to go back to my homeroom and start working on assignments. It was the first week of school after all, I didn't want to get behind in all that. But then, something caught my eye. A bright blue and orange parachute. It was the most alien thing that I had ever seen. But it seemed to be calling towards me. So I decided to walk up to the table that it was there. And at it stood one of the most charismatic men I ever met. He seemed to be oozing enthusiasm. He seemed to love what he did, be passionate about what he did. He grinned ear to ear, and in one breath, he said the words that changed my life. Hi, this is Gopher Space. We build high altitude balloons. Now, if you've ever heard of high altitude balloons, then you're in for a wild ride. They're pretty much balloons, little scientific payloads that carry experiments, computers, radios, cameras, souvenirs, anything you can imagine, that are sealed up, packed onto a massive helium weather balloon that expands, by the time it gets up to its peak, expands to about half the size of the stage. <coughs> and it brings it up to about the altitude of three times that of, of a commercial jet. That's 90,000 feet. They can take amazing pictures. They can collect weather data. They can, you can do experiments. All was a high school. Honestly, that was one of the most amazing things I'd ever heard of. I chatted with him for about an hour, what I felt like an hour, speaking about computers, science, technology, engineering, math, space, anything. And by the end of it, I signed up. Within the first week of working with this club, he sent me home with something. He had heard about my woes about programming and about how hard it was to me. So he decided to send me home with this. This is an Arduino. It's a little credit card sized computer that helps teach people how to code. And let me tell you, it changed my entire outlook on programming and computers in general. Because rather than typing out commands and seeing numbers fly across the screen, with just four lines of code, you can make a little light on it blink. You can make that light blink faster by just changing those four lines. You can make it blink slower. You can make a buzzer sing, Mary had a little lamb. Or, as my job was, you could make a computer record weather data from a balloon that was over 90,000 feet in the air above me. Needless to say, after my first year of working with Arduinos and with computers with this club, I was hooked. I started to spend unhealthy amounts of time tinkering around with them, looking online and seeing new tutorials how to do things, trying to teach myself more about how computers work. I started to try something new every year. Around this time, I started to call them capstone projects. Every year, I'd try something new. I'd see what I could push. I'd see what I could do with it to push it to its limits. Could I record UV data from the sun? Sure, the module's online. You can, buy, you can buy the part online, slap it on, and just program it with about 10 lines of code. 
Could you record its location with the GPS? Of course. You can seem to me like you could do anything with Arduinos and with programming. Now, after about three successful years of programming and working with these, another teacher approached me with something that I had never even heard of, something that was groundbreaking for my province of Manitoba. She wanted to start a competitive robotics team in high school. When I first read about it, I was absolutely astonished. It was something I'd never heard of and it seemed like the perfect thing for me. High school teams building human-sized robots that, com that competed in sports-like games. It was perfect for me, especially the fact that I could just, I didn't have to do sports. I could just let a robot do it for me. <laughs> Needless to say, I agreed to start this team. And over the course of six months, I mentored and led a group of 13 students, each of which brought something new to our club. Each of them wanted to learn. Each of them had a similar sense of curiosity as I did. Each of them wanted to try something new, such as engineering, mechanical work, electrical work, or even design or marketing. There was one thing that they wanted to, that they relied on me to do, and that was programming the robot. Now, this was entirely different than working with Arduinos. It was so, the computers on these types of robots are about 10 times or even more powerful, about as powerful as a cell phone, but they're even more so complex. So I had to relearn much of what I had already learned. But sleepless days and sleepless nights passed. After what felt like over 100 hours of research, development, and programming, it finally seemed like I could get it, that the robot was primed and ready for competition. Everybody, I like you mean opportunity. This is my school's robot. destruction, I instead was growing that curiosity through creation. I was making things. I was for once, in a sense, engineering things with my own thoughts and my own ideas. When I looked at each of the team members in my team that helped build this, I saw that each of them had the exact same, that exact same sense of curiosity, that exact same sense of intrigue. And it all wouldn't have happened if they weren't given that original opportunity. That's in fact what, why we named it this way. That's why I want to help bring other teams to this province just like this. By next year, I want another team competing alongside us or against us. By the year after that, I want four. I want to make it that every high school has the same opportunities that I have, so that students can go above and beyond and excel in what they want to do. Looking at that, sense, that same sense of curiosity, I never really gave it thanks for it making me into what, it, what I am today. Frankly, I hope it sticks with me. I hope it changes with me. So that it helps me become the person that I want to be. 
when I fulfill my dream of becoming an engineer. If I had to leave each of you with one thing today, it would be, if you have an opportunity in front of you, then take it, because you never know what you'll learn from it. And in turn, you never know what lies around the next corner. Thank you.